Conti's family, I'd like to lift up a few of our announcements for today. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, the uncles, brothers, neighbors, men of the church who are and have been father figures, to the mothers who are both mother and father, and mostly to our Heavenly Father, the perfect example of who a father is. The Adult Bible Study on Wednesdays is taking a summer break. However, we do have a new study starting in July on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. by way of Zoom. Please refer to your bulletin for more information. If you'd like to participate in this study, you may call or email the church office to sign up. Christian sympathy is extended to Roseanne Roberts and the death of her mother, Mrs. Bernice Long. Please keep Roseanne and her family in your prayers. Brandon Izzard would like to thank you so much for the calls, texts, gifts, and cards he received for graduation. He is grateful to have such a wonderful church family and ask that you would continue to keep him in prayer as he goes to the next phase of his life. Remember today at noon is the Children's Liturgical Arts Live. Please join Gwen Poole at facebook.com slash drama for living. That's facebook.com slash drama for living. If you do not have a Facebook account, please refer to your bulletin and click on that link at noon to join the class. Cheryl Little has invited us to another new exercise challenge starting today. This is a four week walking challenge that starts off moderately and works up to 30 minutes per day. Make sure you contact your physician before joining this challenge. There are benefits of walking, which include helping with weight management, is accessible to everyone, it helps reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety, lowers blood pressure, and good thing is it's free. Let's Talk Race Committee of St. Matthew's and West Market United Methodist Church have scheduled a prayer vigil to address the racial divide in our community, state, and nation. This prayer vigil will be held on Thursday, June 25th at 6 p.m. Rain date is June 30th, same time, in the parking lot at St. Matthew's on the Britton Street side. Everyone must wear a mask and bring your own chair. The church buildings will not be open. Active Impact is a new group that was established based on the feedback from the Zoom meeting to respond to George Floyd's death. This group will meet on Monday, June 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Please look for an email sent from the church office last Thursday with the minutes and sign on information in that email. The church council met on Wednesday, June 17th. Some of the highlights for this meeting are as follows. Our trustees recommendation for a membership covenant and a worship protocol were approved and will be sent out to the congregation. The ministries of media, finance and trustees will work together to get media equipment for live streaming, which is needed when we go back to in-person worship. The Health and Wellness Committee are working on protocols for people entering the church buildings. Taking temperatures is a requirement. Please note that if your temperature reads at 100.4 or greater, you will be asked to return to your home to enjoy the services virtually. Upon returning to normal business hours, employees will be required to do health screens before they are able to enter the church building. A couple of requirements to note due to COVID-19. The Western North Carolina Conference requires that we do not distribute any items on the church property, such as waters, papers, books, fundraising items, etc. We will continue with limited entry into the building for staff and food pantry volunteers only. So please do not ask to enter the building, even if someone is inside. 
We praise God for your faithfulness in giving of tithes and offerings. This is just to remind you that there are still three ways to do just that. You may give through the Give Plus app for online giving. You can mail in your contributions to the church office. Or while you're out and about, you can stop by the church, place your tithes and offerings in a sealed envelope, and drop in the mail slot through the door at the Britton Street entrance. There are additional envelopes available for you at that entrance. Please remember to keep in touch with our sick and shut in and with each other through personal calls, texts, emails, and video conferencing. Thank you so much for your attention of today's announcements and have a blessed day and a blessed week. Good morning, everyone. Our children's moment for today is what God wants from us. And it comes from the scripture, Micah 6, verse 8. And it reads, God has told you, O mortal, what is good? And what does God require of you but to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God? So we're going to talk about those three things that God is asking us to do. First thing he asks us to do is to do justice. When we do justice, that means we're being fair. We're treating others how we want to be treated. We're treating people equally. Treating others with respect. That's what doing justice means. The second thing he asks of us is to love mercy. When we love mercy, that means we show kindness to others. Showing others that, they, that we care about them. That they matter. That they matter to God. And that they're valuable. So when we love mercy, that means we're being kind. And then the last thing he asks us to do is to walk humbly with God. Walk humbly with God. And all that means is that we remember that God is with us and guides us. So no matter where we go, what we're doing, God is right there with us. So we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to feel anxious because God is right there with us. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for today and every day. Thank you for your word that asks us to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. We know that you are with us always. Give us strength, give us peace, and help us to share your love every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture lesson this morning comes from John 5th chapter, verses 2 through 16. John 5th chapter, verses 2 through 16. I will read from the message translation. Soon another feast came around, and Jesus was back in Jerusalem. Near the Sheep Gate in Jerusalem, there was a pool, in Hebrew called Bethesda, with five alcoves. Hundreds of sick people, blind, crippled, paralyzed, were in these alcoves. One man had been an invalid there for 38 years. When Jesus saw him stretched out by the pool and knew how long he had been there, he said, Do you want to get well? The sick man said, Sir, when the water is stirred, I don't have anybody to put me in the pool. But by the time I get there, somebody else is already in. Jesus said, Get up. Take your bedroll. Start walking. The man was healed on the spot. He picked up his bedroll and walked off. That day happened to be the Sabbath. The Jews stopped the healed man and said, It's the Sabbath. You can't carry your bedroll around. It's against the rules. They ask, who gave you the order to take it up and start walking? But the healed man didn't know, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd. A little later, Jesus found him in the temple and said, You look wonderful. You're well. Don't return to a sinning life or something worse might happen. The man went back and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. That is why the Jews were out to get Jesus because he did this kind of thing on the Sabbath. This is the word of God 
for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Listen while you still can hear. Listen while you still can hear. The Master's calling. The Master's calling. Bow down while you need Good morning. I greet you in the strong name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. Happy Father's Day to all. This is a wonderful day that the, God, that the Lord has made. Usually in church, we have our Father's Day service with a guest speaker, and we have our Father's Day booklet that the men have worked hard to put together. But this year, because of the coronavirus, we have to do this virtually. But uh, whether or not we're virtual in church, God is here. And it's a good day that God has made. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for all the men who have served as fathers for others, those who have given of themselves in your spirit to companion, to walk with, to help others find their way home to you, to name their faith, and to say that I too am a child of God. And Lord, we pray now for you to come and have your own way. You are the potter and we are your clay. Amen. Well, we continue our sermon series on the defining moments in the life of Jesus Christ. And this morning, we're going to look at a defining moment that talks about healing and talks about new life. 
this moment defined who Jesus was and healing power, but it also defined a man who had been sick. But this, he, this defining moment also revealed the hearts of those who are around Jesus. Our story begins this morning with a man who for 38 years had suffered a debilitating illness. He came to this lake called Bethsaida, and at that lake, the tradition was that the angels stirred the waters. And as an angel stirred the waters, if you were the first one to get into the waters, you would be healed of your sickness. Now, this man never could be first. No one was there to help him. And even though that was the tradition about the lake, there was really no proof, even in Jesus' time, that people were healed when they got to the waters first. But for 38 years, he had been coming to those waters. For 38 years, there was nobody there to help him. And for 38 years, he'd been left disappointed, left alone in his pain. There was nobody there to walk with him, to help him, to be a companion to him. Jesus was traveling through the land side. And he happened upon this man. And he asked the man a question. He says, uh, what do you want? That's a simple question. And the answer would seem obvious. But like most human beings, we don't always give the obvious, simple answer. Instead of telling Jesus what he wanted, he instantly drove, dove into his story of woe. He talked about his pain. He talked about his suffering. He highlighted that nobody was there to help him. And when the angel stirred the waters, nobody helped him get in the waters. He was always left in his pain. The man was defining himself by his troubles. He was defining himself by his woe. It had become so much a part of him that he couldn't see that somebody was actually paying attention to him. Somebody wasn't in competition with him. Somebody was in the moment, there, breathing the same air with him. You know, we do that sometimes as human beings. We focus so much on our pain, so much on our sorrow, so much on what's not going right, that when something comes our way, something good, something we've been looking for, we don't always recognize it. We're so caught up and so used to things going wrong, we're so used to hurting, that when the possibility of healing comes, we don't know how to say, come on in. So after the man told his story, got finished with his story, Jesus looked at him and said, now, what is it? What is it that you really want? And he wanted healing. And with eight simple words, pick up your mat and go. That man was healed. He was made well. He picked up his mat and he walked on. When somebody walks with you, when somebody is your companion, it makes all the difference in the world. When you know that somebody's going to receive you. And maybe that's why we celebrate Father's Day. A time to recognize those who have walked with us. Those who companion us. Those who listen. Those who offer us a word of hope and those who help us find our way in this life. Jesus offered healing from the Father in heaven. And that man picked up his mat, got up and went away. All of his story of woe became a testimony because he ran into these Jewish leaders who saw him carrying his mat. And they said to him, why do you have your mat in your hand? Don't you know this is a Sabbath? You see, they were very particular about the Sabbath day and what you could and could not do on the Sabbath day. Well, he just started telling his story. He said, I met this man. I don't know who he is, but I met this man and, and he took away all my pain. He took away all my sorrow. He took away all my suffering. He told me to get up and take my mat and walk. And I did. That's just what I did. And as they listened to his story, they couldn't hear about the healing. They couldn't hear about the suffering relieved. 
You know what they heard? He, he told you to pick up your mat, did he? And then he told you to carry it around. Is, is that what he said to you? A moment that defined Jesus' healing authority and power. A moment that define a man from a world of pain to a world of joy, from a world of suffering to a world of relief. In that moment, those who were around Jesus, those who were around this defining moment, their hearts were revealed. Those Jewish leaders couldn't care less about the good work that happened in that man's life. They were upset. Because the rules around the Sabbath, these are good rules, but they made those rules so stringent and so strict that they thought that you betrayed God if you did any work on the Sabbath. All they heard was, this man told you to pick up your mat and carry it on the Sabbath. Who is he, they said. Who is this man? Who is it that told you this? Well, Jesus never identified himself. And by the time the man went back, Jesus was already gone. It was a few days later when he encountered Jesus again. And Jesus met him and asked, how you doing? How are things going for you? I tell you what, Jesus said. You're going to be healed. All you have to do is sin no more. Go your way and your heart will be free. Because if you let sin in, Something bad might happen to you. He's not telling him that things are going to happen to him are going to be bad. That's just a general statement that when we allow sin to rule us, we also allow for bad things to come to us. And then he found out Jesus' name. He did go to the Jewish leaders and told them, the man you asked me about, the man that healed me, the man that made my life whole, his name is Jesus. And then the scriptures say from that point forward, those leaders, they had it out for Jesus. Now, I don't think the healed man knew what was going on. He just knew joy of being healed, the joy of new life coming his way. The Jewish leaders, when God saw or when God made an opportunity for somebody to be made well, they couldn't see it. When God moves in our lives, people have a choice of how they respond. When God heals us, people have a choice of how they will say, Amen, or what's that all about? They will say, Hallelujah, or they will say, Now what you going to do? When Jesus moves, when defining moments come to our lives, they give us hope. They reveal the glory of God, but they also reveal the hearts of all who are around us. So how do we react when Jesus has a defining moment in our life, or the life of somebody around us? Can we see the good thing God is doing? Can we see the great work God has done and will continue to do? Can we celebrate and say hallelujah? Or will we look for the one or two things that seem out of place? Will we master in the minors or major in the glory? That is our choice. We are being defined right now. Our country is being defined. This COVID virus is redefining who we are. This protest against police violence, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is redefining who we are. And there are some things we just don't want to pick back up. There are some things we don't want to bring into this new moment. We are being made brand new. And that's a good thing, a holy thing. A blessed thing. As we celebrate Father's Day, I encourage you to go back over the defining moments in your relationships with the men in your lives. You. Yeah.
biological fathers, your adoptive fathers, the men who have cared for you, who have companioned you, who have walked with you, who have encouraged you, who have helped you to find your way home to Christ. Think on these things. Re-examine those moments and see how God has been with you all the days of your life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, I do want to thank you for your generosity, your tithes and offerings. I want to thank you for your faithfulness in giving throughout every week. So let's now pray together as we give God thanks for our resources. God, we give you thanks for the resources you have put into our hands, for the way you have entrusted us with everything that is yours. Lord, bless our hearts and minds to be ever generous as we are ever grateful that we may be able to share, that others may know the fullness of your glory. And in the sharing, Lord, we find our life is made abundant. So come now, Lord. Of thine own, we give back to the world. In your precious and powerful name, amen. Be blessed.